All right. Uh, good afternoon to those of you on the East Coast. Good morning to those of you on the West Coast. I'm your host, Brandon Troy, host and co-creator of Movers and Shakers Unlimited. And uh, if you take a look, if you took a look at the title, I can talk this uh, morning, this afternoon. Um, you'll know that we have uh, two terif terrific guests uh, on tap for you guys. And uh, I won't keep you waiting. They are uh, have brought their musical talents as composers to the film known as Pearl. Um, so it is my pleasure to welcome uh, Tim Williams as well as Tyler Bates. Let me bring them on. Hello, Tim. Hello, Tyler. How you guys doing? Good, Good morning, Brandon. Morning. How you doing, man? Absolutely. Uh, how you guys doing? So uh, just 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 to hit the ground running, um, or I should say to check in, if you will. I know we were talking about it a little bit, Tim, uh, a little bit offline. You know, how are you guys, uh, you know, uh, doing? How have things been? Yeah, very good. We're uh, we're still enjoying some warm weather here in L.A. I know uh, in other parts of the world it's starting to get cold, but uh, uh, we're we're still a nice and warm here in L.A. Indeed, indeed, Tyler. Yeah, I'm I'm well, man. Uh, just got in uh, early this morning from a long uh, planes, trains, and automobiles kind of uh, travel. So um, my ginkgo biloba hasn't kicked in yet. So I apologize. For <laughs> for my stupidity in this in this talk. No way. No, no, not at all, man. Not at all. Um so, you know, as I said, uh guys, uh you know, in talking about the film Perm, I want to get into that, but uh I want to, you know, uh uh talk briefly, you know, about uh your career paths because uh you know, one thing that we like to do here on the show is, you know, give people a a, a peek in on, you know, perhaps if they want to travel, you know, take that career path of of you know, what's necessary to do that. So um, I know it's funny, we were talking about it, as I said, Tim, of, of uh, the the climate that we have been have been in, met, all of us have been in the last couple of years of, of a lot of things being shut down. And, and uh, we are at the, it feels like we are at the end of it. We're at the light end of it, of that tunnel, so to speak. So um, can you guys respectively, you know, talk about, you know, that passion to, um, to do uh, uh, music because of, of going that, that career path of uh, being a composer. Because I know, you know, even with you, Tyler, you know, it branches out even beyond, uh, it branches out a great deal even beyond, uh, you know, providing music for uh, film, but also, you know, being on stage and in, 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 in that capacity as well. So if whoever would like to go first, can you, you know, talk a bit about, you know, that passion when you knew, um, you know, that that was a career path you wanted to do and then, uh, additionally, uh, what what were some of those primary things um, in the infancies of those respective careers to kind of get it jump started? Tim, do you want to explain what led you not to quitting this pursuit <laughs> <laughs> along the way? Yeah, yeah. My my sort of journey began actually in, in pre med. I was uh, I was studying pre med at university, and I found that I was spending more time you know, at the piano than I was uh, doing the experiments and science, sciencey stuff I was supposed to be doing. Uh, so I've always had a, a, a huge passion for music. Um, I, I began as a concert pianist. That was kind of my background was was coming at it from that point of view. And but I always used to enjoy writing. And for me, film soundtracks were one of those places where there was a wonderful crossover between um, contemporary writing and you know I, I love classical music but it to me there was something about film scoring and the film music and uh, that was really interesting and fresh and modern and and encompassed so many different styles um, so that was that was really just a passion I just couldn't put it down every time I was supposed to be studying I ended up you know fooling around at the piano and coming up with ideas and really a move move to LA um, was was fantastic because Tyler was my neighbor and he was in the full throes of creating these amazing scores for uh, for film and uh, he sort of heard you know the stuff I was doing coming over the fence and I was hearing his stuff coming over the fence and uh, it's always such a great joy to work with Tyler um, he's he's just such an incredible musician and he comes at it from a, a different point of view with a with a rock background um, and so there's this really interesting kind of intersection where our different approaches and skill sets collide 
and um it, you know it's it's always the greatest joy for me to work with him cool cool tyler yeah uh i mean i've always always been music um i think i actually learned to read by uh asking my mother to to read liner notes with me uh to records just because she listened to records all the time and i love music um i always wanted to know who made the music how they made the music who played on the music and then uh i started playing instruments saxophone and then guitar which probably destroyed my saxophone career but um <laughs> <laughs> i've just always loved all styles of music um and uh after you know all my early bands uh i moved back to los angeles uh a while ago but i had already you know had that in my blood because i probably played you know 1100 shows 1200 shows something like that yeah. um, before i was 30. so um once i was back in la I, I moved back to write and produce records with people but then i would meet people whether it's at a barbecue <laughs> or it was uh elsewhere and and i was asked to score movies uh and they were willing to teach me from their perspective be it a director producer editor um re-recording mixer i was very fortunate to learn the process of from everyone else's purview uh which helped me adapt my style and talent if you will into uh film composition um which took a little while because i i had i i did not meet another person who scored a movie until after i completed 18 movies so i was just feeling my way through the dark uh, it took a while uh before i actually managed to realize i should uh use my innate sensibilities as an artist and musician my signature in the creation of my film music and it started to culminate i would say and you know rated x and get carter with stallone and then uh once dawn of the dead happened i was i was completely in that was i think number 33 that was my first number one film which was uh, yeah very exciting um but it, i realized because I, I i was writing songs with artists and producing that once I started working with directors and producers, the correlation between the two were very similar because it is still about storytelling. Songwriting is about storytelling on, on many levels. So uh, my skill set was pretty, pretty good, but I realized there was so much room for growth, so much room to learn, and so many interesting people I would have in my life if I pursued uh, film scoring and television work. Um, that it just led me in that direction and you know eventually in the early i don't know 2013 or something uh i was convinced to really get back into making records and touring and all that stuff but i really love uh collaboration so tim and i met at the end of our driveways in 2001 and had our first uh working uh job together in 2005 where he did some orchestrations for me on the fly, like the night before a session. And then, uh, and we loved uh, the camaraderie we had already built. And uh, our first score that we, we worked on together was 300. And Tim, uh, at the, on the day we were flying out, really helped me with the final cue of the movie. I was stuck in the last minute and a half. And he came over about five hours before we left for the airport. And, we just sat side by side and worked on it and um it was very natural and then we had such a tremendous experience in the production of that score that uh i don't think it was something that you know i ever thought about again i'm like gosh yeah i love working with tim and that's uh you know we've learned a lot together we've made a lot of mistakes together but we've learned a lot together and um and it means a lot that we share this history uh, in support of one another. Uh, Tim's done some great films uh, in his own right as a composer and definitely helped a lot of other people bring their scores to life, whether it's through uh, orchestration and conducting just all different facets of producing a score. So, um, and as Tim said, we do have different skill sets, but we're so in each other's mind that um, we know how to to work together and know how to to navigate through each other yeah and to sort of prompt each other you know like we're doing a show right now where there's a lot of organic instrumentation it's uh very very fun uh to do but 
because there's so much to do. You know, we do a lot of the production stuff here at my place, but Tim does a lot of great writing on it. I do my own writing on it. I play, you know, a lot of bass and guitars and stuff and we're uh, recording horns and it's just kind of batshit crazy. So it's really fun uh, to do that show. And um, it feels really great to, to, you know, be in it with somebody that I, I consider, you know, one of my very best friends. So um, that's a big draw for me in this is this, there's no Island of being alone and being the King or whatever. I don't give a damn about the optics. I really care about the experience and the people. And uh, I think that's led to us having a, a very long and interesting uh, collaborative career together. Cool. 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 So, you know, in, in speaking, you know, further to that, from what it sounds like and gathering from what you guys were saying, it, it sounds like, you know, circumstances may, you know, give you the opportunity to, to put you in a position to, to do, you know, to, to have a lot of opportunity, you just have to be ready for it. Would you agree with that? Or, or would it be anything like formal in terms of, you know, you must go to, uh, you know, you must go to, you know, this specific, you know, music program or this specific university or go through this specialized program. It sounds more like, you know, being, um, you know, continuing to work at your craft, but also, you know, being prepared for the moment when the opportunity arises. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I, I think you summed it up perfectly. It's, um, you know, it's it's having that innate sense of who you are as an artist, what what inspires you about your craft and bringing that to the table. That said, the more experience you can get, the better it's going to be because uh, there's a lot of technical side to film scoring. And that's an area where a lot of people can stumble because they don't have that. Um, I think any any time you can. I mean, I still I still take courses online just to go. Oh, that's interesting. But uh, you know, one of the biggest ways, certainly, that I learn is is through collaboration. I work with someone else and um, look at how they're doing something, and like that gives me ideas. Where you're like, oh, that's that's a that's a really great way to approach that. Um, but I think at the heart of it, it is it is trying to you know really find who you are as an artist. And, and that's why Pearl was such a great opportunity, um, you know, for Tyler and I, because because that language of that film very, very much aligns with with what I love about film scoring and is a very natural sort of um, it's a very natural sound for for my background and, and for um, you know, they're, they're the film scores that I, I loved when I was younger. And, um, you know, so when you get a chance to really write something that reflects, you know, your passion, then it, it's, it's going to be much better than if you're, you know, you're, you're working on a project where it's, uh, you're struggling a little bit with the sound or you're having to try and find it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's great when, when those opportunities align with, with the skill set. Cool, cool. All right, so just uh, that's actually a good segue. Hopping right into uh, Pearl, can you guys uh, talk, you know, a bit about that process as well? Because I feel, you know, as, as I love horror films, and uh, you know, in terms of genres, and this is just my opinion, but you know, as as important as music is to you know film in general, I feel that it's very key, um, arguably in very, you know, uh, specific genres, you know, in, in your horror genres, in, you know, its use in comedies, uh, in, in its use, uh, and I, and I want to get into that with you, Tyler, too, of, of, and both of you guys with the, you know, superhero fair with fantasy, all of that stuff. Uh, it, it plays a very key role. So um, specifically in this case, can you talk a bit about, you know, the, the challenges of just in general, the the dance that you have of the use of music and trying not to because it's very easy with I feel with horror films to oversell something um with music and that uh and trying to also at the same time find that balance of holding back when necessary of, of pulling back when necessary so can you you know talk a bit about that dance of you know, providing music, you know, in this genre? No, I would just say at the beginning, um, I have a question for you, Brandon. Do you, yes. Is Pearl a horror movie? 
I mean, oh. you you analyze this and discuss this with people all the time. Because to me, it's like a psychodrama. You know, that's yes. I I, I feel, view that film as an actual dramatic film where horrible things happen. Uh, so so we definitely you know our mentality about the movie is just that. And um, just wanted to say you know going into this before we get into you know Tim's the uh, next. Uh, reply to your question because sure. um he has some great insights about about the approach to this too but uh this this was my for third film with ty second this year um but ty is not only a great writer and director but also an editor so he edited pearl and tim and i got a, a locked picture meaning the editorial there was not going to be any any changes and a lot of what composers do face is say lyrically a, a score piece was saying i can't uh -huh. wait to get i can't wait to get to you right um uh, but then the cut comes back and it's in the 11th hour sometimes it's after you've recorded and that would equate to i can't get you <laughs> but you need to say the same thing that you originally said right. so we deal with that dilemma quite frequently. And I've noticed in the past with some of my scores, you know, some of them, the lyrical aspect to melodies is, is sustained over certain moments because a shot was extended or maybe the opposite, it was, it was cut. So one of the luxuries of stepping into this movie was knowing that A, it was a locked picture and B, Ty West is very uh, intelligent about why what and why he wants uh music to do for his movies um and and how to solve that equation is is in a conversation between us it's not pointing at something referentially literally and saying i want that instead of like okay here's what i'm thinking what do you guys think and um so that makes the experience very rewarding and it, it definitely frees you up creatively to delve into something very very uh deep and uh with a great deal of commitment um so to do a lyrical score like this i think those circumstances contributed greatly to the music ending up as a successful body of work and i just mean that like literally technically um which is great so when you're writing it there's just such a natural flow to how melody works and how you your voice leading and your chord progressions um, can be detailed and you can build to modulations, especially in a movie like this, which is an ode to, you know, the golden years of Hollywood. So um, that part of it is, is really fantastic. And I think that the whole movie is based on those kind of metrics. So uh, as composers, uh, it was a real joy to get into it. Now, Tim, uh you can talk about all the interesting stuff now <laughs> <laughs> the um and i want to say that was interesting but go ahead <laughs> that was very interesting um for me the the thing that um i love about uh films particularly horror films is where you have characters that you empathize with and that was the remarkable thing about Pearl was you just fall in love with Mia Goth. And even you just kind of want to give her a hug, even though, you know, you're going to look down and have a knife in your stomach. Um, you know, there's that there's that um, sense of relating to her dream. You know, she she carries that dream of wanting to be getting out of where she's at. And so for us, creating a theme that really represented her her dream, her hopes, her yearning was was all sort of something that Tyler and I discussed very early was how do we how do we create a theme that ha that has a dual function that can present as her in her mind wanting these um wanting to be a, a dancer and yet at the same time when things start to go wrong how do we twist it how do we work that theme through the whole score and uh, and turn it um and I think that's uh, th those are the types of films I love where you can really create an empathy for you know and it's and and, it, and it's all there and in ty's amazing work and and mia's phenomenal characterization um that that sort of set the bar so high that 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 we wanted just something that could really capture try and capture that that sense of her her dreams and um 
that for me is when I love, you know, horror films. In fact, any type of film is when you really care about the character, you're drawn in, you care about what happens to them and you're hooked. So, um, you know, they, they did a phenomenal job in this film of really making you identify with, with, with Pearl, you know, yeah, the one one really cool thing, Brandon, about uh, the way the theme works in the movie is it's sort of a barometer for the permutations of Pearl's mental state as they, you know, as, as we go through the story uh, from beginning to end. So obviously, we we be, begin with a great deal of hope, at least for the first minute, <laughs> but. Um, there's this romance of an idea of of what she's yearning for in her life and her future, uh, her escapism, and all that's uh, encompassed in in that main theme. But there's some extremely sad and dark moments in the in the film too, where it's imbued with that main theme, and it's a rare opportunity to do something like that because generally films as of today don't offer the opportunity to take a theme and um, you know really mutated or retrofit it into you know such a, a spectrum of emotion and dynamics you know so um this is very special for us um to have a body of work like this that functions in that way and uh it's it's one of uh, my favorite scores that uh, i've been part of so it's great all right cool awesome all right, cool, awesome. Um, so, you know, and lastly, in closing and in talking about, uh, and I mean, you guys have, have covered, you know, the general gist of it, but I know in, in you guys talking about that collaboration and um, that process of, of uh, you know, uh, uh, composing a film, in perhaps there, were there any things that, you know, going in, you pictured, oh, okay, this is, it's going to, you know, go um, this way, it's going to go smoothly in this way. And perhaps like you had to veer right when you thought you were going to go left in, in uh, uh, getting to the finish line once you, once everything all came together. And if so, like, um, were there some specific examples or instances of that? Yeah, the, um, the one small hiccup we had was um, not so much in the writing, um, but first day of working with the orchestra was a little difficult just because stylistically this film is set, you know, musically it's set in sort of the 1940s language. Sure. And there's a lot of techniques that were very natural back then, like portamento where you slide between two notes, um, you just connect them. And uh, that's a style that people just don't use anymore. Um, and we, we had some younger players in the orchestra, so it took a little bit of time and, and it's very unusual sort of use of, of, of low woodwinds in sort of triads and things like that. And it's just not something that people are used to. So I remember the first day it was a little bit hairy because we were just trying to get the, the sound into people's, into the orchestra's mind. But second day on, it was, it was fantastic. And even by the end of the first day, there was that kind of glimmer of light, but that was definitely... <laughs> Uh, a little bit of a phone call back and forth with Tyler and I going, you know, we're going to get there. But uh, but the <laughs> orchestra got there and did a fantastic job. And it was just really interesting because it, it's, you know, such, it's a style that people just don't use anymore. So it, it just took a little bit of time for them to hear it and understand it and then begin to go, oh, OK, this is what it's meant to sound like. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then Tyler, was it was would you say the same? Was there anything other other example that you that comes to mind for you? Or would that be, you know, that example that? Well, in, in, the, in the production of the score, that's the most indelible <laughs> point that that we had to uh, to discuss. And you know, I, I think that Tim and I have, have each worked with so many brilliant orchestras. Um, we sometimes forget some of the bugaboos that pop up, or you know, just uh, how it does take a, a minute to uh, to convey what the the actual syntax of the the score is with the players but ultimately the players uh we recorded this in nashville and they wanted to make it happen um so we, i would say that the first uh, few hours were were pretty excruciating and then all of a sudden it kicked in and we realized that uh, it was going to come together because obviously when you're doing a movie like pearl 
or really pretty much any movie that I've ever worked on, there are limited uh, resources and time. So uh, you really only have one shot at it. And um, and we were just uh, excited when it started to come together. And Tim is an excellent uh, conductor as well as composer and orchestrator. Uh, so he has a tendency to really bring out the absolute best. Um, you, you know, some some movies that you that everybody knows are incredible, but one cue may be recorded in a day or two. You know, for instance, we did 300, which is our first movie together, uh, orchestra and choir in three days. Uh. So like that's pretty much unheard of for something like that. But um, that's where Tim's Tim's great uh, expertise and, and unique talent as a conductor comes in, uh, being prepared with orchestrations and copying. And then my experience in the studio as a producer, it all just combined to help us get over the finish line. And then over the years, you know, I mean, Tim and I have just grown together and learned a lot from each other. And, you know, I know I've deviated from your question, Brandon, but no, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. The, you know, that's, that's the thing. Every single project, every movie presents uh, unique challenges and it's our job sure. to not only understand and, you know, we don't judge people that we work with. We understand them. You know, our job is about the storytelling and emotional and a musical language um, that is going to help the movie uh within the context of the director's sensibilities and you know over time you become much more attuned to that with each experience um and so you know this one was was it flowed the process flowed very simply because uh i had just worked with ty on x earlier in the year and the end of last year and he and i've known each other a long while tim and i have been brothers for decades now so um all that stuff really does factor into what we feel is our our success in uh, our approach to to the work together so um it ultimately is is quite fun but there's always a left turn there's always a fly in the soup you just have to deal with it you can't freak out you just, you just have to you know really relax and think about what needs to happen and and take another look at it once in a while Gotcha. Gotcha. And I'm going to definitely sound like a publicist now, but uh, um, we'll, what's, you know, I know you guys, you know, you, you commented on throughout this entire interview of, of, you know, working on this film and then even past collaborations, what is up next? Or are you, are you even able to say what's up next of collaborating together p potentially? Dude, we, we live with under an NDA. <laughs> we talked to you about like a, a number of things yes, at the moment yes. what's exciting especially for tim because tim has two great movies that uh that just uh did very very well at, at the toronto film festival and i'm excited for him uh the swearing jar is his other movie uh that's great um but we're currently involved in a in a working together uh, in a tv show we're just nearly finishing probably later tonight um the first season and that's been gotcha. a, a tremendously rewarding experience you know you get into this and there's the career aspect of it but you really have to think about who you're who you're spending your time with you know everybody sure. needs to earn a living and and wants to to grow as a composer but you, you know you really want to think about who you're working with and what your life experience is like and and that's you know i think a, a really primary reason why tim and i have continued to work together through the years because we really uh, love each other and respect each other's talent and we we learn from each other and we have fun cool cool yeah. cool awesome and uh with that being said i feel like that's a perfect uh point to uh leave it off uh thank you guys so much for uh, hopping on um and uh talking about uh pearl and and as well as your respective career paths as well um for those out there, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm your host, Brandon Choi, host and co-creator of Movers and Shakers Unlimited. You can find me just down below, as you can see there. Otherwise, thanks again, Tyler, Tim. Thank you, guys, and uh, see you soon. All right, Brandon. Take care, man.